Hello everyone welcome to my channel. I'm Tony and today, you are joining me for a brand new Feng Shui episode. Feng Shui is an ancient Chinese philosophy and it has been improving people's lives for centuries. The word Feng is Chinese for wind and the word Shui is Chinese for water. Together, these symbolize the flow of Qi or life force energy in an environment. Qi is the Chinese term for the universal life force energy in a state of constant change. Feng Shui is based on the Book of Changes, which holds that everything is energy. Feng Shui isn't something you do. Its influences exist in natural and man-made environments. Whether you believe it or not, they are already affecting your daily life that you may not even realize. All buildings have a unique feng shui energy blueprint from the moment they are built, which you can think of as the DNA sequence of the building. Like all things in life, there are good and bad energy combinations within every building. If you had to pick one room in your home, you definitely want to feng shui your bedroom. Why? In feng shui philosophy, the bedroom is the most important room of the home. This is the room where you sleep the most and it's the most personal to you. You're in a more passive state when sleep, and your body and mind are at their most vulnerable. So any feng shui changes you make in your bedroom will have a significant impact on you. I mean, a really good night's sleep will help you solve any problems in your life. You can start your everyday with confidence and purpose when you have good feng shui in the bedroom. It brings positivity, happiness, and good vibes to you and your spouse, your friends, and your co-workers. Imagine what it's like to have a bad night. I mean, you don't get a good night's sleep, you wake up badly from a dream, and you start the day wrong. You have an angry breakfast with your love, and then you go back to work in a bad mood. If you do not change, this will make your daily life worse and worse. Even though there are some things we can't control, there are a bunch of things we can control in the bedroom that are free and super easy to do. The artwork that you use in the space, how clean and well kept the bedroom is, the colors that you use in the space, the beams above the bed, the mirror that you place, but the most critical factor to good chi in the bedroom is the orientation of your bed. How to locate your bed in your bedroom using feng shui? Bed placement is the most important aspect of good feng shui in the bedroom. For those who live in a room, a poor bed layout can lead to sleep problems, wealth problems, as well as relationship problems. There are two walls where we place the bed. We call it command position. The only factor that determines the command position is the entry door. Command position should be placed diagonally from the entry door on either of the two walls. In other words, place your headboard against a wall where there is not a door. Basically, the command position is the part of the room which is the most protected and it has the best view towards the door. You have the full view of who's coming in and who's coming out. Make sure the top of your head is near a solid wall or at least your headboard toward a wall with a closed window that doesn't have any drafts. Try to keep your bed as close to the wall as possible. When you sleep in the command position and your bed close to the wall, this reduces the movement of chi or energy above your head, so you will have a restful night's sleep. Prioritize the command position of your bed first, then you can consider all other details to find out the best wall to place the bed. The coffin position means a door open up directly in line with the bed. This is the absolute worst position for your bed. Your feet is directly in front of the door, which Feng Shui considers a coffin position. It's how people who have passed get carried out of their bedroom. When the headboard is located on the entry door wall, you are not in a command position and you can see who's coming in or out. When the door opens to the side of the bed, the bed is just in the flow of QI. It harms the bed and the sleeper. According to Feng Shui principles, when a bed faces the toilet door, the position can cause the loss of wealth and damage the bones and muscles. This is because of the bed's smell, moisture, 
and germs associated with the toilet. If you have a bed on one side of the wall and directly on the other side a toilet bowl, the position can create confusion, lead to headaches and cause loss of concentration. You never want to have your bed in front of a window if you can avoid it, because all of that active young energy entering through the window and hit your head disrupt your sleep. This is quite common that a command position in a bedroom naturally falls on a wall with windows. To solve this problem, you can layer the windows with curtains or blinds and always keep them closed at night. The bed should have a headboard that lends solid support. If you have an opportunity to place the bed on a command position, the windows on the side wall, that would be perfect feng shui bed layout. Place bed on an angle means you have no solid support in feng shui. Fill up the empty corner if you must sleep this way. And keep the door closed, or at the very least, a few inches ajar when you're lying in bed. This reduces the movement of qi or energy above your head, so you will have a restful night's sleep. Again, your headboard should fit flat against your wall as close to the wall as possible. Decorating and furniture can be used to create positive flow. Feng Shui believe that a room with unbalanced energy can affect our health, relationships, and finances. Here are some Feng Shui bedroom taboos to keep in mind when decorating one of the most important rooms in your home. If your bed is on the floor, you will absorb too much in or day energy when you sleep. So definitely raise your bed up. Make sure there is space under your bed. The qi, which means life force energy, can flow freely all around and restores your energy while you're sleeping. In feng shui, it's said that mirrors in front of the bed invite a third person into the marriage. Mirrors are also thought to reflect active young energy in a space of rest, which could disrupt your sleep. While mirrors are great for making a small room look bigger, mirror placement can be difficult when implementing bedroom feng shui. If you do need to have a mirror, make sure it's facing and reflecting something that you love looking at. A good idea is to place them opposite a window. This will help maximize light in your room without distracting you when trying to relax from your bed. It is most important to ensure your mirrors aren't in line with the bed that you can't see yourself from bed and the mirror does not face out of the door. Sit on your bed and look around. Just look for anything that's kind of pointing at you with sharp corner. It's like an arrow shooting straight at you with killing energy. That kills your good chi in your bedroom you need while you sleep. It could be nightstands with sharp corners. It could be a dresser. It could be the corner of a lamp. You don't want anything sharp pointed at your face or your bed as you're sleeping. There are many ways to fix it. You can remove it if it's a piece of furniture or a piece of decor. You can block it if you can't remove. Try a pillow or bedding, maybe another piece of furniture or decor. Things directly above your head and your bed create pressure and cuts the energy of the room. Don't place your bed under any low beams, soffits, or sloping ceilings or you will feel pressure. It can also make you ill because the beam is cutting across your body. Don't hang an overhead ceiling fan in the bedroom. Every blade is a poison arrow that keeps shooting at you over and over. Better to make sure the ceiling fan is not above the bed. Don't hang a chandelier or pendant light over your bed because it may cause harsh light and feelings of unease if something is dangling above you at night. The artwork in your bedroom can say a lot about your personal life and affect how you feel about your life. But paintings and large photographs can produce that same heavy, threatening energy of a window or beam. Instead, hang a light, flowing tapestry with an inviting pattern. It brings positivity, happiness and good vibes to the bedroom. If you do need a painting in your bedroom, make sure it's a peaceful and calm scene. Note that high contrast paintings can disturb the quality of your sleep. Primary colors can trigger major problems depending on the feng shui energies of the bedroom. Avoiding primary colors is a good rule of thumb, particularly reds, purples, blues, and black. 
Sleep relaxation works best when nothing in the bedroom design that stands out or attracts too much attention. To achieve this sense of balance, which is also an important part of feng shui, choose colors and patterns which are muted and soothing. Soothing blues, pinks and greens work well to create a harmonious, distraction-free space for relax. If you're redecorating, look for furniture, bedding, and accessories that are neutrals in color. If you can only change one thing of the room, switch up your bedding. Look for neutrals that are coming without being uninteresting, such as stylish muted shades of blue, pink, and taupe, among other colors. Don't forget to clear out the space under your bed. Clutter under the bed can create unnecessary stress and headache, even if you don't realize it at first. Just like you shouldn't keep anything threatening above your bed, there shouldn't be anything below it either. If possible, it's recommended to have no storage at all under the bed. Then the energy can flow freely all around and make you feel better while you're sleeping. A messy bedroom isn't good for energy flow, even if all of your furniture is in the right place. Keeping your bedroom clutter-free is also essential to good feng shui. Take time and clear your bedroom regularly. Smudge the bedroom or diffuse the space with sweet orange oil to uplift your bedroom's feng shui and energy. If you're hoping to invite a partner into your life, make sure there is space for both of you. Make sure the bed is longer than your height. If the bed is too small for you, it means you cannot grow in life. It restricts you from growing in your career and relationship. This applies to kids too. Change the size of your kids' beds as they grow up. Do not limit. When it comes to preventing sleep, blue light is one of the worst factors. The presence of devices in your bedroom can disrupt your sleep and relaxation. Since feng shui is centered on nature, anything technological or man-made will lower the level of qi in our environment. Remove all TVs, electronics, appliances, and phones so that they do not produce any bad energy around you. In our busy modern lives, we already spend a lot of time on screens every day. So why not let your bedroom be a completely technology-free space? This may be a controversial point, but in feng shui we do not want too many plants in the bedroom. One or two plants are perfect. But making your bedroom into a jungle of plants that may bring too much energy into your space. The energy of the plant is too strong and growth-oriented, which disrupts your sleep. It can mess with the love, relaxation, and positive energy that you're going for. Remember, always keep the plants alive and dispose of the date once as soon as possible. I hope you have a better understanding of bedroom feng shui now and how sleeping in a command position is really going to boost positive energy. If you like this type of content and want more feng shui videos, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and absolutely share this video with anyone you know who's interested in feng shui. Also, let me know if you want a feng shui home series. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next week.